you cannot rely on medical schools using those updates as part of their determination of whether they want to interview you and accept you. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you doing today? I am doing really well, Dr. Gray. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. What can I help you with? So I recently have been taking the time to turn around my application. Um, your podcast has actually been very helpful to me. Um, I retook the MCAT. I just scored a 521. Um, I'm in a special master's program. I'm currently top of both the med school class grade-wise and the uh, master's class grade-wise. Obviously, my update has not been sent yet. I'm still in the process of doing it. But I was trying to see what other things I could do to potentially improve my application um, during the cycle, because I, I have a ton of clinical experience. I have a ton of volunteer experience. I have a ton of shadowing. I, I recently got rejections from a lot of schools that I wanted to go to. Like I got six rejections that came in before my grade update went out. So obviously they're never going to see how well I was doing in the program. But is there anything else that I could be doing to potentially show these schools like what I have been grinding at for the yeah. like the last three years. Yeah, it, it's a great question because <laughs> it's a very common issue that students run into. Students who are relying on great improvement through an SMP or through a post back while also applying to medical school. Yeah. I like to say apply to medical school when you don't have any more updates to send to schools because yeah. you can't rely on sending updates to schools, whether it's clinical experience, shadowing, research, grades, MCAT score, you cannot rely on medical schools using those updates as part of their determination of whether they wanna interview you and accept you. And so for you, it sounds like potentially you needed some great improvement, you needed this yeah. MCAT improvement, but you applied to medical school anyway and your first semester or whatever it was of, of grades coming in through the SMP or through your post back, whatever it is, that's not reflected in what was transmitted to the schools. And so yeah. the schools are working with half-baked data. Yeah. Right? And it's just, in my mind, it's, it's a wasted application almost. It's like, yeah. I generally recommend, and obviously <laughs> this is post your application, but for everyone yeah. else, I generally recommend if you are doing a master's, an SMP, a post back, wait to apply until those grades are finalized, you're done with the program, you have proven you can handle yourself academically. Yeah. Now, with that said, in your situation, I would actually challenge you on the schools that have rejected you that they will quote unquote never see those grades. There's no rules out there to say that you can't reach back out to those schools and say, hey, I, I know you rejected me, but I reject your rejection and here's why, right? <clears throat> here's why I would love a, a, another look at my application. Unfortunately, my grades weren't were finalized or my semester grades for my, my master's weren't finalized. Here's where I stand in the program. Um, here's my updated MCAT score. If you could give a, another look at my application, that would be wonderful. Yes. Right? You can do that. There's no rules that say you can't. So I would go ahead and do that. Now, for every other school out there, you have to do a case-by-case -case basis. Does the school accept updates? Uh, if they do accept updates, how do they want their updates? What kind of updates do they accept? And that just is a lot of kind of research on your end to figure out who to talk to and what to say and how to say it. The yeah. biggest piece of advice that I can give for updates is make them short, short and impactful. Nobody wants to read a, a sheet of text. It's just, it's impossible in today's day and age with how much communication we're getting uh, every day. Everyone's yeah. bombarded with emails and texts and, and everything. Make it short, make it sweet, make it to the point and, and make them understand why they're reading it. So in terms of kind of your general question of how do I improve my application? I don't know. Right? That's a that's a question that's gonna be a different answer for everyone going yeah. through the process. It sounds like you knew maybe that your grades and your MCAT score were a potential issue, so that's what you're working on. Now, 
for some people, lack of clinical experience is what they need to work on. For some, it's lack of shadowing. For some, it's potentially lack of research if they, if they want to get into more research-heavy institutions. Whatever it may be, that answer is going to be different for everyone. So I can't really answer that question for you. I don't know what your personal statement looks like. It could be horrendous, right? But you, you don't get a, a second chance to send uh, a, an updated personal statement. Your yeah. activity descriptions may be horrendous, right, in, in my opinion. Um, yeah. So I just, I don't know is, is really yeah. the, the best answer that I can give you for how can you improve your application. So uh, I can actually speak to the personal statement and activity descriptions. Uh, Dr. Wright helped me write them. There so, you go. Uh, I, I think they're probably not <laughs> the problem. <laughs> um, as far as the MCAT, that thankfully was on the original application, so that does work in my favor. Okay. Um, and it obviously gets sent as an update, even if it wasn't, but it was on the original application, so that definitely does help. Um, and I think my program, uh, I, I, I clarified this, but yeah, I, they send a great update, even if I don't necessarily say, hey, you need to send a great update. I just have to give them the list of schools I applied to and they'll send it to every school, even if I've been rejected. So that's to your point. Um, hey, I, they're essentially doing the work for me, which is phenomenal. I, I've never really heard of a program doing that, but yeah. hey. Um, so they send the great updates. I, knowing what you said, I'm definitely gonna have them still send it to the schools I've been rejected from. Mm. Um, and one of them, Stanford. So I got rejected from Stanford and I was very surprised not because my grades were, you know, in their stats, but I don't just have the good master's stats. The last three years of my education, I was averaging about a 389. Um, and so why, I was in a why are you program. doing a master's program then? Because my overall GPA is horrible. Um, I started with a 2.3 my freshman and sophomore year, and then it was a five-year program. So the okay. last three years, I had a 389. Okay. So... I have that upward trend, but unfortunately, because of the amount of credit hours I took each semester, yeah. I got ranked up by AAMC. So almost all of my credits are concentrated in my fourth year, even though that's not when they yeah, were Yeah, but, but, but that is like, and I actually talked about that this morning in my Instagram Live. It's a very big kind of misnomer about how medical schools get data. Is yeah. when you print out your PDF, it looks like you just have one big blob of, of fourth year credits. How yeah. medical schools get the data is they get every single data point and they can sort and rank and, uh, and filter and do whatever they want with it based on last 20, last 30, last 40, whatever they want to do credit wise. So I wouldn't worry about like to me, that's not a concern that students should have is, oh, I have a lot of senior year credits just the way that AMCAS categorizes credits. All right. Well, that's reassuring knowing that um, the advisor at my school advised that I should potentially send an update, just like pointing out, hey, I, this is just building off of something that I already had going for me. Yeah. Um, the, the medical schools can see that. Perfect. Yeah. So the, the other big thing that I would question is, is there something that I could, you know, say in an update or should I reach out directly, say to Stanford, um, if that's the one that I was like really, really upset about getting rejected by saying, hey, I'm sending you a great update. I understand that you rejected me, um, but I would love if you guys gave my application another look. Is there a way that I could phrase that to best not please the committee yeah I, I, I think you include some like why stanford in there as well why you're you're so gung-ho on stanford yeah. uh, ultimately it's stanford right yeah. it's really hard to get into stanford and so yeah. anyone who comes to me is like i'm really disappointed to get into stanford i'm like yeah get in line right well, <laughs> lots, yeah. lots of people yeah. are so uh, that's the whole kind of game of medical school admissions is yeah. you kind of set your heart out for these dream schools and a lot of it is just it's it's a crapshoot it's it's really yeah. it's really hard um to understand exactly what they're looking for and that's where some luck comes into this process is who exactly got a hold of your application uh and not only who but what kind of day were they having was it yeah. before lunch or after lunch? Did they just have a big fight with their spouse the night before and they're just not in the mood to look at applications and so they're looking at your application through through a kind of a, a muddied lens? Like you, you have no idea what's going yeah. on and you just, you can't control for that, 
And so yeah. you you kind of spread the applications out to uh, all of the schools that you're interested in going to, and you get rejected at most of them. And that's just the process. That definitely makes me feel better. Um, I will say that the reason I wanted to go to Stanford is I just felt like I'd be a really good fit there because they have all of these LGBT, you know, communities like activities, organizations. They have an LGBT research seminar that they hold every single year. Um, and I, I felt welcome, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Like, and I know there's a lot of other med schools that do that, but they do the most out of every school that I've applied to. Yeah. So it was just, it was more of like, I felt like I would just be at home there. And I, I love the location. I have a number of researchers that I've reached out to that I was like, hey, I would love to do research with you if I did end up here. Yeah. Um, so it, it was it was like culmination of things. For me, I, and I know this is not true for a lot of pre-med, I could care less about the name of the school. Uh, like I, med school is med school. If you get into a school, you get into a school, you're going to be a doctor. Whether it's DO, MD, you're going to be a doctor. So for me, it was more of like, I just felt like I would have been such a good fit for the school. And I feel like based on what you're saying, if I get on the phone and I explain that and say, here's the great update, I'm showing you that I can do this. Would you take another look at my application? They might actually consider it. Yeah, but but here's here's one thing I warn you. I'll warn you on just because of the language that you just used, right? Yeah. Of is I'm gonna show you with this great update that I can do this. Yeah. You have no idea why they rejected you. It. Yeah. You're assuming it's your grades as why they rejected you. Yeah. But it may not be. Right. And so I yeah. don't think you can assume that it's your grades and go and try to pitch them that it's your grades, right? If, if, um, <laughs> I'm really bad with analogies. I think I'm really good, but some people don't like my analogies, right? If I go and buy, I try to go buy a car, right? We all know that, that car sales people are, are not the most uh, up and up people. Yeah. But if I go and try to buy a car, right? And I go to the, the, the lot and I want an SUV, yeah. right? I want an SUV and the car salesman doesn't ask me what I want. They just want to sell the car that they want to sell. And they're trying to show me this fire red sports car that's really awesome that if I was 18 years old again, I would I would love it, right? And just drive yeah. fast. And I go, no, no thanks. That's not what I want. And so they go and they 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 go and, and, and show me a, a sedan, right? I don't want the sports car. Maybe I want something slow. I want a sedan. No, I don't want that. And then they go and show me the pickup truck. No, I don't want that. And they're making assumptions all along the way of what I want without really asking me, right? Yes. I just want the SUV. Go sell me the SUV. You are making assumptions that the medical school wants you to show them that you can handle medical school when in yes. reality they just didn't like your activities or they didn't like your personal statement. And even with Dr. Wright helping you, they they just may not have resonated with your story. And that's okay. Yeah. Right? And so so the, the question that you asked me earlier about like how to frame it, how, how to uh, like language to use in terms of the update, that's what I would recommend is don't frame it in a way that's assuming that it's your grades that caused you to be rejected. Just leave it open to, hey, here's just another piece I'm sharing with you. Please reconsider me with this additional piece. Exactly. Perfect. So the, the one other thing that I've kind of run into this cycle, um, I apply across the board to all kinds of schools because as I told you, I don't care about name. I don't care about stats. As long as I was in the realm, I shut up the application, which is something that you recommended. Um, so I got rejected from some schools and I reached out to them and I was like, hey, because they did give advice. So I was like, hey, what happened? And they were like, well, we didn't think you'd go here. We think you're going to get into a better school. So how do I, <laughs> yield how protection. Do I that? that? Like, yeah. So that that's known as yield protection. Uh, yeah. a, a lot of uh, pre-meds talk about it as this like kind of mythical thing. It's, it's just a true thing. Right. Yeah. Medical schools only have a certain number of, of interview spots. They only have a certain number of seats. They need to interview as many people as they think kind of mathematically that it works out in the end that they have a full class without going under, without going over. It's just a balancing act that uh, schools do. And that is one thing that they do is they'll they'll look at stats and go, 
well, you're, you're too good for us, so we're not even going to bother. And again, that's one thing where advocating for yourself is really the only thing that you can do in these situations is, again, I would love for you to reconsider. Here's why I'm really interested in going to your school. I didn't apply here as a quote unquote safety school, which again is the language that I hate. Um, but, but give them a reason to potentially reconsider. I, I had this issue with, with a, a student a couple years ago who wanted to go to Toro, a DO school in California, because yeah. he, he was a, a very non-traditional student, did very well in the MCAT, 520, 521, uh, but he wanted to go to this DO school. His grades were decent um, because he owned a house like five minutes away from the school and he didn't want to move, he didn't want to sell his house. Yeah. And, and I, I, that's exactly what I told him to do was advocate for himself post application just to go like, hey, I know that there's this potential that you may not interview me because of my stats. You, you may think I don't want to come here, but here's why I really do. And I, I do know that one of them was likely partially related to the fact that I got into their SMP and I went to a different one. Um, <laughs> the thing that it wasn't related at all is just being ignorant um, because, you know, that's me already not picking them once. Um, but uh, the other one was just straight, hey, you, we don't think you're coming here. So, like, I, I just didn't know how to approach that because I didn't think that me with my GPA, my overall GPA is, as I said, not very good. I think I have like a 3-2 as AMCAP calculates it, even though there is a very strong upward trend. Um, and it's 3-2 across the board, BCPM, like, you know, it's 3-2. Yep. Um, and I didn't think I'd ever be in a situation applying to an MD school where they would go, no, he's not coming here just because I did well in the MCAT recently. So they know that I'm busting my butt recently, yep. that I'm probably going to do well in the S&P and then just get in. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, it's a situation I didn't expect myself to be in. So I was kind of just very yeah. tall you, you, you didn't expect to be in because there's this pre-med myth that all schools care about are stats. And uh, yeah. and so if you have high stats, then they definitely want you. And I get, that's not what schools care about. Not all schools care about, rather. So, yeah. so does that answer most of your questions? Yes, that definitely answers most of my questions. Thank you so much for all of your help, Dr. You're welcome. I, I want to ask you a question. You got a really high score on your MCAT. Uh, the Ask Dr. Gray series brought to you by Blueprint. Uh, it, it sounds like maybe you use some Blueprint products to help you get that score. How, how did Blueprint weigh into getting a good score? So um, I used a lot of the Blueprint practice tests uh, during my prep. Um, I had already exhausted a lot of other practice tests during a previous time I prepped the MCAT and all my friends were talking about how great Blueprint is. And I saw you talking about how great it was. So I used the diagnostic to kind of feel out where I was. Then I started my content review um, and used Anki to kind of like figure out what content I needed to you know, really hone in on and memorize. And then that kind of fit very well into like the blueprint test. And I found that the blueprint tests were so identical to the test on test day that using that in conjunction with the AAMC materials, I was so overprepared by the time I got to test day that <laughs> no I so felt so. like, yeah, no, I felt ready. Like I finished every section 30 minutes early. Wow. So like that, like that felt so good, especially coming from my previous time. I got a 508 the first time, which is still a phenomenal score. Nothing to sneeze at, but I, I didn't feel like prepared like I was the second time I took it. And yeah. I definitely think that blueprint kind of played a huge role in that because the tests, they're not too hard. They're not too easy. They're kind of right in the middle. <laughs> they're they Goldilocks. Exactly. They're, they're right where they need to be to yeah. kind of make sure that you know the material at the level of critical thinking that you need for the actual test. Yeah. Um, and I like the blueprint cars because it, it, unlike a lot of other cars materials that I've used, it actually replicates the MCAT cars. Cause like I was using Princeton review cards. No, that, that didn't necessarily like, it was too hard. Like mm. you, you, you can't necessarily compare it to the real test. Yeah. Whereas the passages I got on the, the blueprint practice test were the exact same difficulty I ended up with on test day. So it, it, it ended up working out very well, especially when that was my weakest section. 